Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is going to be a shorter video than the ones I've been recently posting and it's because this week and the next one are the final weeks of the semester. So I've been finishing and delivering a lot of projects and studying for exams and all of that, but I didn't want to stop the weekly uploading. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks on using note-taking apps on the Tab 6 or any other device you use to take your notes. For this video, I'm going to be using clips from me taking notes on either OneNote or Squid, but I consider that everything that I'm going to say can be applied to another note-taking app. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Next week's video is going to be the third episode of the series where I review note-taking apps for the Tablet 6, so you can check the previous episodes right now if you haven't and comment which note-taking app you think I'm going to be reviewing on that video. So, the first and most important tip I can give you which is something that I always mention to people that are into digital note-taking, is to define an organization method for your notes. I consider myself a very organized person, at least most of the times, and I think that when it comes to digital note-taking, it's better if you know where your notes are stored, because I've seen some people trying to show other person something that they wrote, and they had to go through all their notes to find it. In OneNote, I like to create my notebooks based on the semester I'm going to be using them. So for example, for last semester, I created the Fall 2019 notebook, which has the five classes I took. A cool thing that you can do in OneNote if you have it on your computer or any Apple device is that you can create categories inside of your sections and pages. So in my case, for every class, I added one section specifically for lectures and I added others for studying or homework. And inside of each section, I created groups of pages, which are either chapters or weeks. That kind of depends on the structure of the class itself, but having it organized makes an incredible difference for my notes. And you don't need to follow this same structure. You can create notebooks for all of your math classes, or maybe you want to create a notebook for each class that you take. How you structure it, that really depends on your preferences and the things you're doing. And it is important that you're not only organizing how you store your notes, but also organizing the content of your notes. And for this, you can follow a structure of the way you write your notes. So for example, in my linear algebra class, I always create a new page when there's a new topic, and I like to highlight it to make it more noticeable. So in that way, when I'm going through my notes looking for a specific topic, it is easier for me to find exactly what I'm looking for. And not only that, you can try to arrange your notes in a certain way where everything makes sense to you. Maybe you don't like to have too much space between your paragraphs, or maybe you do like it. But the idea is that it is easier for your eyes to read notes that follow certain structure and not just read a bunch of text that it's all around the place. What I used to do when I typed my notes in OneNote was to assign specific fonts and colors to the titles, subtitles, or headings, and create indentation levels that belong to the same idea, so that large blocks of paragraphs don't look as intimidating when you're going through your notes to studying them. Another thing that visually helps your notes is to define specific colors to certain keywords. I like to do this with a highlighter, but if you're using OneNote for the Tab 6 or any other app that doesn't offer a variety of highlighters, you can also change the color of the ink you're using. So if you're taking notes during a lecture and you know you're about to write a definition or a theorem or maybe even an example, you can write and highlight that keyword so that when you're studying for an exam and you're trying to find the definition of a topic or an example, it is easier for you to recognize and find exactly what you're looking for. Finally, I wanted to mention a small trick for OneNote that I learned from one of you a couple weeks ago. So if you can think of a trick or tip while watching this video, make sure to leave it in the comment section so that others can read it and maybe apply them to their notes. So the thing is that on your computer, you can download more than one version of OneNote. I think that the one most people use is OneNote for the Windows 10, which is the one that I showcase in my review video. But you can also download one that's called OneNote 2016, and that version gives you the possibility to change the aspect ratio of your notes. So if you go to view paper size, you can select different sizes for your page, change the orientation and many other things. This change applies to that note across all of your devices. However, it is not actually a change of paper size. It basically creates visual limits for you to know where the page starts and where it ends which is useful if you're planning to print your notes, 
but they don't actually prevent you from writing outside the boundaries. But yeah, it is a cool trick that I learned and that I wanted to share because it may be useful for some of you. Let me know if you found this video useful or entertaining by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future content. And if you got this far into the video, leave a comment with your favorite tip or trick that I mentioned in the video or one of your own so that other people can see it. This has been a regular teenager. Take care. Peace.